What's up everybody, Cerebro 4 It only took me a year, more than a year actually, but we finally managed to get at least three Gardevoir GXs, that's all you really need. And I'm gonna show you guys a Gardevoir GX. It's gonna be for this new format though, since I got the cards now. We're gonna try it out, but we don't have a lot of the best shit. Okay, so this is going to be Gardevoir GX, and as you guys can see, it's partnered up with Sylveon. It's pretty paramount, It's I don't think there's any better way to uh, pair Gardevoir with, you have to run Sylveon GX. If this was the expanded format, I'd play it much differently, running Xerneas, running that kind of engine, adding fairy energies on the field. But since we don't have a lot of the best supporters and you know searching uh, consistency capabilities, Sylveon is the way to go. Uh, with Sylveon, uh, you guys can see I have a max stat EV line and two Sylveon GXs. Maybe you want to run three. You don't really need a lot of these, even just one is fine. Uh, the, the reason why we run multiples is that I don't want any of them to get prized. I don't want a game where this is prized. The ideal scenario is you open up with Eevee. This is why we run multiples of, maxing it out. Uh, attach a Fairy Energy, becomes Sylveon GX, and then you can use the Magical Ribbon attack and add the cards to your hand. Add uh, the pieces, add Rare Candies, add the Gardevoirs instantly like that. and. It does have a few weaknesses, it's a little combo, I'm going to mention it later. But it's the way to go, it's the best way to run a Gardevoir GX in this format uh, in standard right now. Now for the Gardevoir line, I didn't really mention it, I should have started with it, but it's three, e, well not curly, <laughs> three Gardevoir GX. Uh, you can try four if you want, but uh, space is pretty valuable in this deck. It's not just because I have only three, uh, in Expanded I would actually run, go late to with this like uh, two Gallade, two Gardevoir GX, or three Gardevoir GX, one Gallade, it depends. But with three Gardevoir GX, you know, you should have enough to get the job done. It's supposed to be one of these Pokemon, a stage two GX Pokemon that is meant to survive more uh, with 230 HP, hopefully not get one hit shot easily. But things are pretty aggressive in this format as always. Uh, okay, but three should be enough to do the job. I maxed out. Uh, routes line two. This is the only routes we have. Uh, you normally don't want to open with this unless you're playing first and have the rare candy and Gardevoir in hand and your opponent doesn't use Judge. Uh, that's about the only time you want to open with him, but we still need to max out. I would hate if one of them is prized and then I only have three and then one of them gets knocked out and you only have two left before you evolved. You know, shit of that nature. It's the same philosophy with why I run four Tepics in Embor for Magnemites and Magnezone, this sort of thing. Uh, you want to have spares. And one Curlia, just for the, you know, stage one, it's good to have one of these around. And the other Pokemon is going to be some faces that you, maybe you don't see all the time. We have Xerneas here. This is mainly here as my only counter to fucking Hoopa, the one from Shining Legends that blocks GX and EX Pokemon, and I suppose uh, a little nine tails as well, if that sees a little bit more play. It's my only out is a big basic fairy Pokemon with bright horns. We can do straight 130. It KOs that those Pokemon easily, and uh, it, it's solid damage. It can do some solid damage. Uh, it's not really here for lead, but I guess you have that too if you open with this Pokemon and you really have no choice but to use lead to get a supporter card and get going. Honestly, if you get in such a situation, unless your opponent is really slow as well and got really screwed with his hand and takes a long time for him to set up as well, uh, you're probably going to lose if you start having to use lead and your opponent is getting ready. You really just want to open with uh, Eevee, or at the very least, if you don't open with Eevee and you open with something else, you have the, the hands to get your guard divorce early. It really goes to the Rare Candy video that I've made. Uh, I guess I'm going to touch upon this later. But anyway, uh, the other Pokemon, Oricorio. I think I'm starting to like this card more and more. It's our only way to basically have a, a Professor's Letter. It's a Professor's Letter on foot. Uh, it's a Pokemon. You gotta search it. You gotta play it down. It's gonna uh, take space on your bench. But since I don't have the Mime, perhaps I can make that sacrifice. It basically takes the place of Mime. A lot of times, Mime is on the bench where he doesn't really block any bench damage. The opponent doesn't do that. So it's okay. And since I am running two Tapu Lele GXs, of course, it's quite important in this deck uh, because we want to get that little play no matter what, turn one, or at least get uh, Apricorn Maker play. 
I'm gonna explain to you guys soon. But since I'm running the two Tapul LGXs, we're gonna be running cards like Mystery Treasure, just one, but uh, it's another target or Ikorio. Uh, why not? So these are basically the Pokemon. So for the trainers, you could say they're kind of interesting. Let's start with the obvious stuff. You gotta run your four rare candies. It's really the best way to get uh, Gardevoir GX out. You want to get it out quick. And we're running our three Nest Balls. This is my ball just to get the basic Pokemon. Get those routes pretty quickly. Uh, you want to see this early. That's why you run a lot. Uh, four maybe is too much, but maybe anything less than three might be too little. With three, we have a good chance of at least opening with uh, one of these on the first turn. So if we were lucky enough to, you know, get our routes too on the bench along with the EV, opening up with EV, getting our routes, and then getting a nest ball too, uh, then we have at least two routes on the field, which is it's just good enough. Then I have Pokenav. So this card is pretty mediocre, only because of uh, the way they designed it. You only reveal three cards, and Pokemon and energies aren't really uh, good things to be searching with this if you don't have a a lot of them in the deck. This is why Trainer's Mill is better, because usually you you have more trainers than both Pokemon and Energies combined in your deck. So that's why Trainer's Mill is better. This is, you only reveal three, and you can only get Pokemon or Energies. But since in this deck I run 18 Pokemon and 13 Energies, it's actually more than the Trainer cards. There's still chances where this is going to be dead, but it's one of our best cards we have right now. Since there's no mail, there's no uh, random receiver. Uh, we don't really have any good items like that, and I don't want to max and run many of Acrobike because we don't really want to discard uh, energies. They're important resources in this deck. We don't want to discard uh, having the choice of having to discard something rough. So this is why I'm only running one of these. Uh, I don't run any choice bands in this deck. There really is no space. I try to make it as consistent as possible. This is as consistent as I have... Uh, found to make it uh, and we really just would rather have a bunch of Gardevoirs out and overpower our opponent quickly rather than just having the power of choice bands and things of that nature I'd rather have ways to add a lot of energies in my hand and do the damage that way but yeah this is where the Pokenav comes in I already talked about Acrobike is still a good little card draw one card then the deck hopefully get us some pieces quickly energy lotto I run th 13 energies in this deck, and two of them are DCEs, so it's a nice little energy search card, I guess, since we don't have the letter. Uh, standard text like the field blower are in here too. Maybe this isn't as important now that there's no Garbodor, but it's a card that I really like. I run two of these. You can take it out for consistency, but it's part of my sort of skeleton, I'm always running like two of these, I, 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 two removal cards. Uh, stadium removal cards. Only one max potion. This is a straight tech, of course, for Gardevoir GX. Uh, take advantage of it. Maybe other Pokemon can use it too. Uh, we run the one mysterious treasure for our three psychic targets there, and the Ultra Ball for my last searching card. This can basically grab us anything. Grab us uh, Gardevoir GX. Very important. It's actually. It might not be too bad to actually run two of these and then remove the acrobike I'm thinking maybe that, that's something that's a sound thing to do because there are a, lot of, a lot of times where I just I know okay I, I have to use apricot maker here that's the play to do and hopefully ultra ball isn't prized or you know I'm thinking okay I didn't use ultra ball thank god so maybe having two of these is better and just removing acrobike but you know it, it has advantages and disadvantages you don't want too many of these you don't want to discard many cards like I've said anyways got the one switch and we have our escape board too I do have a bunch of Pokemon that have one retreat cost here so this is gonna be like our float stone and that's basically it for the items there is no other tools in here uh, no choice bands for offensiveness we're just gonna have to rely on Gardevoir GX's power here and hopefully she gets the job done or it gets the job done. Uh, it's still quite powerful, but it does have a few disadvantages going for it. I'm going to talk about later. Okay, so now for the supporter line. 
So the support line, the most important card is definitely going to be Lily. Uh, it's very important to get Lily turn one, or at least maybe if your opponent has a big hand, get a copycat turn one, or just get a copycat early. Just use copycat to draw a lot of cards, of course, draw like 10 cards and shit. But using Lily turn one is quite important. This is why I have two tap Lily GXs to Lily. We need to, we want to get this sort of power play, turn one, get the plus one of drawing until you have eight. And ideally, if I have a few nest balls, if I have like a mystery treasure or an ultra ball, or we have a few cards that we can just play down, and we, you know, play a bunch of Pokemon, play a bunch of cards, and we're, we have at least like, let's say, four cards in hand. Even if you just draw four cards, uh, it's okay. Because if you have a bunch of dead cards, maybe it's Gardevoir GX, which is a piece that you want. Maybe it's Rare Candy, so it's not so bad. Of course, the less cards you have, the more cards you're going to draw. So that's good on you if you're lucky enough. But, you know, this is the importance of Lily. And the other card, we do run one Apricot Maker. I did have two of these. And it's not bad to have a bunch of these, but space is a thing. I had to take an Apricot Maker out for Xerneas. Because I, I don't want to have an auto loss to uh, Hoopa. You only have Curly as an out, and that's that's not going to do anything. So, one of these. Sometimes, maybe we have a bunch of cards in hand on turn one, and no matter what, the little play can't be good. It can't fetch us a lot of cards. So, this is where Apricot Maker comes in. This guy is going to get us Nest Balls, thin the deck, get the routes in play. And it can also get the one of Ultra Ball. This is why maybe running more Ultra Ball is good, because... This guy can fetch Ultra Ball too. And then it becomes a good late game card too. It becomes like a Skylight. It becomes like a way to get Ultra Ball and fetches the Gordivore GX if I have the Rare Candy in hand. And I can use this as a, uh, a combo piece. So it's pretty good. So these are the sort of uh, supporters that you want to play at turn one. We got to have our general good supporters though. Maxing out Cynthia. She's the best. Then we have... Uh, the one Volkler, this is like the Skyla, of course, can get can only get me an item, but it's still a card that can get me the rare candy, get me something specific, uh, even the Ultra Ball as well. Tate and Liza, just a decent little draw card, I guess, draw five, and the uh, switching effect can come in handy. This has come in handy to me, where I, I used this uh, basically just to switch. I had everything else in hand, and switching with these sort of... Uh, Saved my life, you could say. I guess that's sort of a too much of a thing. I, I think I still lost that game. But it's it's a nice flexibility card. One of these isn't bad. If you want to do more, that's on you. But I like one. Copycat, of course, is great. Uh, against Rayquaza GX, where they do the GX attack. It's really great to just play Tapu Lele and search this. And uh, I draw 10 cards. I did this, I did this once on a Rayquaza GX deck. Uh, Drampa GX, if he becomes uh, more popular, I haven't seen it too much, but maybe it will become more popular. Uh, it's it's a way to get that effect, and there's always Zorok GX, there's always people that are going to try and draw a lot of cards. It's basically, do you want to go the copycat route, or do you want to go the disruption route uh, with Judge? Uh, it really is mind games, it's people trying to either lower your hand and just slow you down, or... You can try and basically take advantage of an opponent that draws a lot of cards and you get that advantage too. So it's player preference. I'm going with consistency and speed like I've said. This is why there's no judge and cards like that in this deck. You know, at least N, he had a good disruptive role late game and a solid draw role early on. You know, judge is kind of in between. I'm not the biggest fan of that. This isn't a sort of lock stall deck. Anyways... Disruption deck, whatever. And then we have the one looker. Just one of these for straight draw three. Sometimes we have that big hand. You just want to draw three. You don't want to shuffle and draw. You know, and these shuffle and draw supporters, it's not like we have chorus. So just one of these might not be too bad. I think I, I did have the looker engine before here, like two looker, one whistle. And then we changed it up for more different cards. So just one of these is good. Okay. And that's basically it. The energies are kind of straightforward. Two DCs, 11 fairies. I'm not really uh, above running only one DC and having that additional fairy energy. But I really like the opportunity of 
being able to attack turn two, let's say with uh, uh, Sylveon GX, just attaching that and being able to attack, uh, even if you don't have Gardevoir GX out, and it gives that extra oomph to Gardevoir GX, of course, when you have it, two energies for one. So, you know, we have 11 Fairy Energies. It should be okay. It shouldn't be so bad. 13 Energies is not good. Okay, so let me give you guys a little bit of a verdict, a little bit of a general talk now. This deck is pretty good. I'm going to make a video. Uh, I'm no, I don't know when, maybe in a few days, but uh, talking about the best decks, the decks that I feel like are going to be pretty good this format, even when the Lost Thunder set comes out, they should be good. And Gardevoir GX, I would say it's one of them. I don't know if it's one of the like top three, top four, top five, whatever. It's a good deck. It's definitely a strong deck. But it does have a few disadvantages. Number one is if you don't open with, you know, Sylveon, Eevee, uh, you're already sort of in a disadvantage. You're going to have to get your cards right to get Gardevoir GX out early because if you struggle to get it out, you know, it really sucks. So this is why maybe if you want to run three Sylveon GX, uh, it's, it can't be overkill. It can't be like a sort of more dead cards later on because you only need to use one. But there's been situations where uh, both of them are prized. Uh, it's only happened, I think, once so far to me. And if one of them is prized, then maybe it's not so, so bad. But, you know, it, it's a risk. You know, two maybe it's the best number, but you never know. The other thing is that this deck has a lot of uh, a lot of these other top decks that I think are going to be pretty good. It kind of struggles against it. Metagross GX is the obvious one. Uh, it, it is like the perfect Pokemon uh, to fuck up Gardevoir GX, having 250 HP. Uh, even though that Pokemon has th attacks with three energies, you need a lot with Gardevoir GX to get the one-hit knockout. If you don't get the one-hit knockout, it's like you didn't do anything. That deck runs max potions. You know, they switch around and then attack with the other Metagross GX, you know, really easily. They can easily get a one-hand knockout on Gardevoir GX. It really is the most troublesome deck. Now, I forgot to mention this. I guess I'm going to do it now. Sylveon GX, Plea GX, I guess it's one of the ways you can deal with this. Uh, put two of your opponent's bench Pokemon all cards back to the hand. It is a solid GX attack. It is one of your ways to counter Metagross GX. But it's really too little. It's not really going to save you most of the time. Uh, it, it's one of your ways, but it's still the matchup is still quite unfavorable. Uh, it's not really enough to fuck up the Metagross GX deck, especially if they have like just three Metagross GXs out. Uh, it's you're gonna remove two, they still have another one. You know, if they did the shit right, you know, it doesn't really matter so much. So you have to time it right, but. It's the matchup isn't a good matchup. It is a hard matchup, and this is where the rare candy comes in. And the stuff that I've been saying about uh, stage two Pokemon being so slow and much less unreliable than in the past. It's if the rare candy was faster, then this this deck has a m much better matchup against a deck like Metagross GX, even though they have the sort of speed as well. I would say, but if they play first, you play second. You know, they get their Beldums turn one. You know, by turn two, they might have gotten maybe a Metagross GX or, or they evolved them to Metangs, and they're basically ahead of you. By the time you get Gardevoir GX out, uh, if you don't get lucky, have all the energies, and start getting one-hit knockouts, they're going to get one-hit knockouts against you, and at that point, they outpace you. If you play first, and then you, you have your setup, then you're maybe a little bit better off. You know, this is why playing first is so important. But it's still an unfavorable matchup, so that's rough. Another matchup that's pretty hard is uh, Tabu Bulu GX and Vigavolt. Uh, that matchup is hard because basically Tabu Bulu GX and any Pokemon that discards energies when it attacks, even like the metal decks with Duskmane and Krozma, uh, maybe that's not so bad because it only has 190 HP only. That's still a lot. But uh, Tabu Bulu discards all of the energy, has 180 HP. They have the fucking stadium that's a pain in the ass that uh, makes the Aether Paradise Conservation Area, makes those Grass and Lightning Pokemon more bulky, the basic ones. And it really is rough. You need a lot of energies to get the one-hit knockout. You basically need six energies to get the one-hit knockout on Tabu Bulu. So that's really rough. 
you know, that deck is probably more consistent, maybe, I would say, uh, if they do this shit right. So, once they get going, you, while you're struggling to set up, uh, you gotta outpace them. If you don't outpace them, if you don't play first, I don't think it's... It's a matchup that maybe can be 50-50, but it's rough when they do the 180 and then they discard all the energies. Even though you don't, they can't really get a one-hit knockout on you unless they soften you up with Tapu Koko. That's the thing. They can do that. They can use Tapu Koko, soften your dudes up, and then with a the choice band, Tapu Bulu finishes the job. I only have one max potion here. You can't really have everything. Uh, to make this as consistent as possible, of course, I sacrificed running more max potions, running choice bands. You know, it is what it is. Maybe you guys can tell me, oh, I'll just take out Field Blower, you know, maybe a Switch, some other cards. You know, that's on you. But... No matter what you do, it's not going to be perfect. It is a still a pretty solid deck, though. Maybe maybe these stall Sylveon GX with Gardevoir GX as a backup uh, might be better. Who the fuck knows? I don't think so. But that deck is not good against Malamar, then. But like this, I've made it as consistent as possible. And you do have a few pretty good matchups. I'd say the Zorak GX matchup uh, is 50-50. That deck can still screw you over. I still think that's probably like the best deck, maybe. But uh, it might be a 50-50 matchup if you get a good setup going. And, uh, well, with my cargo, they can't fuck you up. But it's not an unfavorable matchup, I'd say. Uh, Rayquaza GX in any Dragon deck is an easy matchup. Altaria GX even. Uh, well, actually, Altaria GX. Uh, no, because you only have this guy. Uh, but... Dragon decks minus Altaria GX, they're pretty easy matchups. You only need one energy and you can KO Rayquaza GX easily. And that's a deck that's good, Rayquaza GX. So you do have a few good matchups around the board. Slower decks like, uh, I don't know, like Ho-Ho, maybe Blaziken. You know, th these sorts of decks. Uh, Blaziken also discards cards, but I don't know, I think that's... That's kind of like the Metagross GX matchup, so that's not a good matchup. But Dragon Dex, Rayquaza GX, Zorak maybe 50-50. It's not a bad matchup. Any other miscellaneous decks? Basically, miscellaneous and slow decks that try to do fa fancy stuff. Uh, like the Kiawe, Ho-Ho deck, and maybe other decks that are going to pop up. Those are easy matchups. Uh, Gardevoir GX can overpower them and destroy them easily. If you get the time and you set up. But... You do have a lot of unfavorable matchups, uh, mainly Metal, uh, Tabu Bulu GX, and, well, maybe it's just these decks, and Blaziken, I guess, if he becomes good. Uh, I'm not so sure with that matchup, maybe I need to test more. But this is basically the deck, I'm going to show you guys games. Uh, you really have to run Sylveon GX, you really got to get the Sylveon GX play. Uh, I don't see any other way. This is the most, the best way for the deck to be consistent. Get the Guard of OGX early. So, I think I rambled long enough. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys subscribe. Leave a like. Share this with your friends. Several 4 What's up?